Okay, hi, it's Paul Beck with Beck. This is uh, part two of uh, my tutorial on Hurricane Harvey. So just by following the steps, um, stopping the video, following what I'm doing on your own computer, you can analyze um, Harvey and see what's going on. Okay, so, so this is a great site. Now let's uh, go and, and uh, if we go back to Google here, and now we want to now put nhc dot uh, what is it nhc dot NOAA N O A A National Hurricane Center NOAA. Okay, so look at this guy, and we'll see what this is telling us. Okay, so here we go. Um, lots of neat stuff here. Um, I'll do a control minus, and that will shrink the screen a little bit. And we've got some stuff. What is this X over Florida? This is a two-day cyclone formation chance, 40 to 60 percent. So we could get something going on in Florida, 40 percent chance of cyclone formation in 48 hours. Okay, so it gives you information here. And then this is Harvey, right? Its movement is nearly stationary. Okay, it gives its location, minimum pressure, 998. 40 knots. So the winds aren't that high. It's a rain thing. So if I click on here, then uh, it gives more info here. So we'll go down here. So what do we have here? There's all of these lines. And I think they could do this a little bit better. It's hard to see what's going on. Uh, but uh, here's 1 a.m. Sunday right here. Okay, so came ashore Friday night came up this way very, very slowly, stalled out here, okay? 1 a.m. Sunday, which is about where we are. So it was updated. 7 p.m. Sunday, it's gonna be coming down here. Then it's gonna be coming down here on Monday, over to here Monday. And so it's getting pretty close to the coast, okay? Then the forecast is 7 p.m. Tuesday, it switches again. If it goes out here on the water, this will be actually worse because it'll still be looping this way. Actually, maybe not. If it comes out here and takes off, great. If it comes here and loops around and uh, up further on the coast, then it's horrible. But the model's showing it's turning here. If it doesn't turn quite as sharp, it goes into, you know, it can create problems over in Louisiana. So it's supposed to turn here. But the problem is this is so tight. Look how tight this is. 7 p.m. Wednesday, 7 p.m. Thursday. So this thing's still going to be dumping rain in this whole region, you know, uh, for a long period of time. And we've already got 20 inches of rain in some spots. So this is, uh, this is not a good thing. I mean, this is, uh, like, imagine a you know, I mean, we're talking 50 inches, that's four feet plus of rain. Imagine a four foot, like, you know, think of a storm surge over the entire land mass of four feet, four feet of, of rain. I mean, of course, the rain will fall, the ground is completely saturated, meaning the pores in the soil will be filled, the water has to run off, therefore, into rivers, or it makes new rivers. Basically, we could, we're getting a remapping, possibly, of the, of the Texas coastline. And like I said, 40 to 60 inches of rainfall. I mean, you know, it's one to one and a half meters. Rainfall rates of two to four inches per hour sustained. Uh, you know, those things are, are crazy. And we've even seen five or six in some re regions. So let's go and have a look at what else we can get from NOAA here. So uh, you can get the rainfall potentials here. So let's click on this and see what that's going to be telling us. Okay, so here we go. This is a uh, one to five uh, day, 120 hour uh, rainfall forecast, forecast. So from now in inches, uh, five days out, which is 120 hours, it gives a time when it's valid. Um, t over 20 inches in the, is, is in, in this vast region, 15 to 20 inches and so on. Even the bands for a couple inches extend way out here. So this is taking into account the model of where the hurricane's going and where the bands are and how much rain it's putting out. Um, we can look at the tornado potential here. Okay, here we go. Look at this. Uh, there's all of these uh, tornado risks here, tornado warnings. 
here down in this region from this storm. Okay, what happens is you get so much turbulent and so much energy in the storm. Remember, water from the sea evaporates. Okay, from it's heated up by the sun, then it evaporates. That water vapor, which is a gas, goes upwards because it's lighter than the surrounding air. Hot air rises, convection. Okay, and then it re keeps rising up. Now it gets cooler as you get higher and higher, so that water eventually condenses out, forming the clouds. Now when it condenses out, it releases that latent heat, and that latent heat fuels these storms. For every degree Celsius rise in temperature from global warming, there'll be 7% more water vapor in the atmosphere, and therefore a lot more energy, and we're getting these, these deluges, these dumps especially these fire hose situations where something's sitting on a coastline. Because we've seen this um, in other flooding events all along the U.S. coast. We've seen these storms, not hurricanes or cyclones, but just large storms, and they're fire hosing the water onto the coastline. Um, if you look at this, this is the, uh, what you can see here is we've had 44 different uh, hail reports. Okay. Um, We've had uh, there, wind, well, only two reports. I think there's, I mean, they, I don't think that's, <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, tornadoes, 10 tornadoes, okay? So we've had 10 tornadoes reported as spinning off there. If you have an, a smartphone, I really recommend that you get the app Radar Scope. There's a fee to get the basic app, but it gives you all kinds of information. Um, so if you have a storm coming your way, you can use the app and you can see exactly what it is if you need to get to safety, etc. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's just uh, cycle back here. And what else do we have? There's storm surge, um, wind speed probabilities. Um, there's all kinds of stuff on here. Okay, so um, okay, all kinds of good details here. So let's just review, okay? So let's go back uh, to uh, let's go back to Earth Null School. Just uh, cycle through here. Should be on the previous one. Here we go. Okay. So this was the jet streams that we were looking at. Okay. And if you click on Earth, where where did Earth go? Earth disappeared. There's Earth. Okay. Okay, so what you'll notice is um, at the surface, so these are the surface winds. Oh, and by the way, all you need to do is you just click on any region here. Okay, this is, uh, this is not, uh, this is yesterday, okay? We, we moved here. Okay, here we go. Okay, so you just, uh, you know, you can focus in. And then with the slider, then you just click. Now, it tells, it tells you the wind direction and the speed at that point, at the dead center of that point. Okay, so there's the eye, nothing there. You know, here's where the, so you can tell by the colors, you know, the whitest, where, where the lines are closest together, where the winds will be maximum. Okay, uh, this is a surface. This is, a, this is about six feet above the surface. Okay, at a thousand. Okay, it's the same thing, essentially. 850, subtract 850 from 1,000, that's 150. At a zero, it's about 1.5 kilometers, 1,500 meters. Multiply by 3.3 to get feet. So that's about 40, that's about 5,000 feet or something, altitude, okay? 700, rough ballpark, subtract, that's 300. It's about three kilometers high. Okay, so what, look at what's happening as we go from higher and higher. Okay, we, the wind speed increases. Okay, and the characteristics of the storm look different. It's kind of, sort of spreading out here. This is about, it's not completely linear. You would say this is about five kilometers. It's actually more like 5.5, six kilometers. And here's where the jets fly, 250 millibar. This is where we're looking at the jet streams. Um, you can see other things like this is total precipitable water. Okay, so there, this look at all the water this thing is carrying. It's 66.35 kilograms per square meter of area. 
okay uh this is carrying uh, you know you can go over here and you can go to the deserts and whatever and you can click and you can see how much so the total precipitable water okay that's the amount of that's the amount of, of rainfall that you can get it's the amount of water that is that is basically coming down or ready to come down in, in snow or, or rain or whatever you know hail depends okay now tcw is the total cloud water okay so the wa some of the water is in these particles it's forming clouds right they reflect light we see the, these clouds they're darker if they're laden with water so that's the amount of kilograms in uh, the cloud. So by taking the ratio of the total precipitable water to the cloud water, you can kind of get a good estimate of what type of clouds there are. Like I said, this is uh, mean sea level pressure. This is something called the misery index. I would expect that to be very high. Um, it, it's uh, how things feel combined just on temperature and humidity. So it doesn't, it doesn't apply for uh, hurricanes, it doesn't tell you, I mean, the misery index should be enormous for hurricanes, but it's just, a, it's just a parameter. This is relative humidity. So, of course, humidity is very, very high here. You know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of rainfall coming out of this guy. Okay, um, and uh, yeah, so, so just to review, the key factors how climate change is making these storms a lot worse is I'm just going to move the camera so you can get my mug again and I can finish up here. I just have to see how much time I have left. Um, I've got about uh, three minutes or so. Okay, so yeah, uh, let's see if this camera is aligned here. Okay, that's good. Okay, so Move it over just a bit, so it's okay. So let's review some of the uh, things about these uh, these uh, spinners, okay? Okay. The first thing is seawater temperature, right? Higher than twenty six and a half Celsius, which is eighty Fahrenheit, then you get enough energy from the evaporation of that water to uh, form the water vapor, which will then rise, condenses into clouds, you can get tropical storms developing. If the water, when the water goes much higher than that threshold, that's kind of the cutoff level. When the water goes much higher than that, then of course the probability of these, of these storms uh, increases. Okay, so that's key. Um, also, if you have wind shear, which is, in other words, it's winds going different directions um, as you go up in altitude or elevation. So winds could be going this way at one altitude, go up a little bit higher, they're going this way. Now, if this is happening, then of course you can't get a big hurricane and the rotation going all the way up because the top gets knocked off of the hurricane. Okay, so wind shear. Um, so with the jet streams, uh, because the Arctic's warming so much, the jet streams are wavier and slowing down and they're becoming stuck in place. So the key thing with Harvey is, Harvey can't keep going inland like a normal storm would. Okay, Harvey is stuck there because of the position of the jet streams. There's high pressure areas there that are keeping, pushing Harvey back. Okay, because of the jet stream configuration. So if that jet stream configuration stays the same way, then Harvey will follow what I showed you on the uh, National Hurricane Center um, website. Uh, the nhc.noaa site, okay, that will push Harvey and keep, keep Harvey there. Um, so the jet streams are completely different now than they used to be, and therefore storms are behaving differently. Because of climate change, the world is warmer. We've already warmed over a degree, you know, for some months of, of 2017, more like a, a degree and a half. This is to the 1880. To, to 1910 frame. If you want to talk about pre-industrial, really you need to go back to 1750 at another 0.15. So warmer temperatures, more evaporation, more water vapor in the atmosphere, higher probability of getting these storms. As bad as, uh, as, bad as Harvey is, I'm concerned about the response from the Trump administration. Okay, they could actually make things a lot worse than the actual storm itself. Thank you.